I have some things I'd like to tell you about Tyler. Here, we're just standing up here. Thank you. <laughs> well, first of all, Tyler's uh, parents are both teachers in our school district. And uh, his mother, Christy, teaches at Summit High School, and she's taught here for 23 years. And his father, Gary, has taught at Summit Middle School, and I believe that's for 22 years. So how about a big round of applause? Tyler is ranked number one in the class of 2008 uh, with a weight uh, grade point average of a 4.4063. Now that's important because three other students were pretty close. Uh, to imagine we could have four students that would be over four point in that close, but it was again our salutatorian, Sharia Dawson followed by Alex Otto and Dan Herring. Yeah. And this was only finalized on Wednesday, so it was a, there was a lot of drama going on this week, and uh, we thank Jan Winter and our counselors for being able to uh, actually get the numbers down. It's a great job, guys. Well, uh, going on to Tyler, he's a Dillon Valley Elementary graduate. Summit Middle School, and he will attend MSU, that's uh, Montana State University, and he's undecided on what he's going to major in at this time. Today, he's been awarded the Summit Foundation Scholarship, the Dillon Valley Scholarship, the Grant Martin Award, and the Western Undergraduate Exchange Scholarship from Montana State University. Congratulations, Ellen. Besides being smart, Tyler is an elite athlete. He has lettered the past four years in Nordic skiing. He's been rated number one on his Nordic team, and he's helped bring two state championships in men's skiing to Summit High School in the past four years. By the way, the other two years, uh, we came in second and third in the state, so that's uh, not too shabby either. He was selected first team All-State in Classic and Freestyle, and he recently earned the opportunity to compete at the Junior Olympics in Anchorage, Alaska. Congratulations. Tyler is also a strong runner on the Summit High School cross country team and was selected for all for the all conference team. It is my great pleasure to introduce Tyler Reinking, our 2008 valedictorian at Summit High School. Thank you. Yeah, class of 2008. Yeah. Students, staff, family, and friends, welcome, one and all. Over the years, I have been in the band, so I have been forced to sit in the back of the gym and listen to quite a few graduation speeches against my will. <laughs> and I've wished that it could be more like the Oscars, where there's a short but amusing introduction to call up the person who then gets around 30 seconds to say his or her thank yous. I'd like to thank my mom and my dad <laughs> All the teachers who have been so supportive of you. The support is for them. I really would like to thank them, by the way. But then the music interrupts them and they return to their seat. Unfortunately, that doesn't seem to be how this process works. In the last three years, I have observed some patterns as to what can and should be said in this speech. It seems as though one of us has to mention Miss Oliver and her deadly vocab test. <laughs> Most of you guys know what I'm talking about. How we learn about a million words that nobody's ever heard of, and then take the impossible test on them. The analogies at the end of the year make no sense. Even when you are pretty sure that you know what all the words mean, you still are wondering what Miss Oliver was thinking when she wrote it. On the Scantron, you end up simply hoping for some magic to occur. So you fill in bubbles and write little R's in the margins that, so that now your answers read abracadabra. 
next year's juniors will miss out on this scarring experience. But don't get me wrong, they might have lower English ACT scores as a result. The other thing that the speeches all have, and I was told that I'm supposed to have, is a message. Something along the lines of advice for the future, or telling you how you can be whatever you want to be when you grow up. For those of you expecting the deep message, I'm sorry. I'm at the exact same spot in my life that all of you are. <laughs> There's no reason that I should have any inspirational advice that you guys don't already know or expect <laughs> The only thing that I feel like I can say is, if you're going to take the time to do something, you may as well try to be the best at it. There's no reason to do something if somebody else is going to do the, a better job with the exact same task. To take my own advice, I have called upon the authors of the most influential speeches in history, and I have strung them together to create the best speech that has ever been given. <laughs> and to give you some advice about overcoming the challenges that you may soon face. Four score and seven years ago, <laughs> our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation, conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. And I have a dream that one day, this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed, that all men are created equal. From Stettin in the Baltic to Trieste in the Adriatic, an iron curtain has descended upon this continent. <laughs> And I have nothing to offer but blood, toil, tears, and sweat. Therefore, I shall resign the presidency if I can do it. <laughs> but remember, the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. So we shall take one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. And we shall ask not what your country can do for you, but rather what can you do for your country. And we shall overcome. You ask, what is our aim? I can answer in one word. Victory. Victory at all costs. Let not the defeatists tell us that it is too late. It will never be earlier. Tomorrow will be later than today. So I say, Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. <laughs> And he's allowed me to go up to the mountain, and I've seen the promised land. I may not get there with you, but I want you to know tonight that we, the class of 2008, will get to the promised land. And when we do, it shall be a date which will live in infamy. plagiarism, I have to mention that my speech came on quotes from Abraham Lincoln, Martin Luther King, Winston Churchill, Richard Nixon, 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 Nixon,